Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to tonight's lecture. This is the first lecture in the last few that I open it up not wearing a mask. I'm asking for other people, but who's the main person that decides it's safe to take off your mask? Is it Biden? Is it Bill Gates? Is it Fauci? Someone from the CDC, World Health Organization? Is it Governor Whitmer, if you live in Michigan, where we're going on day 400 of flattening the curve? Lockdowns don't work. Why is Michigan struggling so much compared to Florida or Texas? Does it go in one ear and out the other when I talk about vitamin D? I've got good news. It's become very simple. If you're scared, stay home. If you're scared, wear a mask. If you're scared, get a vaccine. But Dr. Jeff, I just want to get back to normal. Well, how much of your rights are you willing to lose? Here in Michigan, we got a local hospital, Beaumont, right around the corner that will not let visitors in unless you could show your little COVID card. There's colleges that are one by one saying, you're not coming back in the fall until you get a COVID vaccine. Europe's restricting travel until you could show you have your COVID vaccines. How many more dominoes are going to fall with this? We shall see. Dr. Jeff's top 20. I'm excited. I've been wanting to do a lecture like this for a while. Dr. Gills got his lecture August 4th on blood type analysis. Dr. Tent has not solidified a date on his next lecture, but I think right now he's leaning towards December with his. His last lecture got pulled from YouTube for cyberbullying. And we, yes, we do have an extra area where we're putting the lectures, which I'll talk about in an extra slide. Preventing dementia will be my October lecture. I had a functional medicine webinar on dementia and that was just a great overall topic and great discussion and some newer things that we could check into. So I'm gonna put some great stuff together in the fall on the topic of dementia. Get connected, find us on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, and uh, we are on Rumble now, so we are putting some of the lectures that have been taken down and transferring them over to Rumble. Um, you know, and take them down as much as you want. We'll post them everywhere else. I do more of my health posting on the Diverse Health Services page. During the week, I do a lot of Q&As. I will go live on Thursday. Um, if I can put a topic together, I will put something together. You can see some of my previous uh, topics on the Instagram stuff. If you go to the highlight section, if you have ideas for me and things you want me to talk about, I'm very much open for that. What is your story? If you've had a great, some good results with us, you know, share it with the world. The Instagram world's been pretty cool and it's um, just been fun with people sharing their stories. So if you've got a good story you want to share with us, Hit us up. Tony will record it and we'll get you, we'll make you semi famous for a little bit. Follow the blog. I haven't been blogging as much. We also have a newsletter. If you go to our website, uh, hop on the newsletter and stay updated as well. I like the personalization a lot more with the Instagram stuff that I've been doing. So I've been doing a lot more of that than anything else. We need to update some of our photos. Uh, I think as we get some warmer weather, we'll get Dr. Gill and some of these photos as well as I have introduced him the last few lectures now. If you've had good results with us, we like to hear it. You know, write us a review, share it with everyone else. We like to hear um, the testimonials as well. So the Skype world has been absolute phenomenal. I, we love reaching out and helping out as many people as we can. It's been an absolute blast. This was an 18 year old down in Louisiana, took workout supplements a few months ago. After taking supplements, patient had panic attacks and anxiety, landed them in the hospital for a day with chest pains. I was laughing when I first jumped on the Skype visit because I knew exactly what he was taking because this is one of the things I had to fix on myself back in the day. I would do my workouts in the evening after school and I would take this pre-workout stuff to give me more energy so I could work out. This kid was living off this pre-workout stuff and he created having a knot 
in this chest. I relaxed his heart with two forms of magnesium, calmed down his brain, and also used the Cardio Plus, which has the Cataplex E2, which is the nitrodilator to help oxygenate the heart. Simple fix, but all these pre-workout things are so loaded with caffeine, you constrict your arteries and you create this angina and chest pain just from simple caffeine use. This was Columbus, Ohio, gosh, maybe five years back. I don't know, actually this was four years back at the Arnold Classic. I met Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's amazing how much in real person and taking a picture, he still looks like a wax person from that. I bring this up because we got in with passes earlier than everyone else was able to. And at every little table that we went to, we kept drinking their little pre-workout drinks. That was the last time I put a knot in my chest from the caffeine use from those pre-workout supplements. Back in my day, everyone would abuse more of the ephedra, the crash study and all that. Now ephedra is gone. Now everyone's addicted and hooked on today's speed of Adderall. Effects of caffeine on blood vessels. Blood pressure can go up significantly after caffeine use because it seems to block a hormone our bodies produce to keep our arteries open wide. When, caffeine's, uh, when caffeine makes the blood vessels in our body narrower, the, this leaves less room for the blood flow, which in turn raises blood pressure. I get a lot of patients that will ask me, what's your take on caffeine and coffee? Everything in moderation with coffee is okay. Depending who you talk to, you got your pro coffee people and your anti coffee people, you could find literature on both ends, but in moderations, it's fine. The endorphins you get from coffee and morning coffee and the dopamine push, I've got no problem with that. Excessive amount of caffeine use is a diuretic and you will lose your water soluble vitamins. Your B vitamins and your magnesium primarily are lost very easily. The vast majority of people in our country, probably the top deficiency among Americans is a B vitamin deficiency. Pop tea, coffee, alcohol, diuretics will push your B vitamins out of you and these are the symptoms that you will run into. Magnesium, same thing as well. Used in a lot of metabolic processes within the body. Many deficiencies of malabsorption, alcoholism, uh, hyperparathyroidism, uh, renal disorders, diabetes, diuretics uh, will create deficiencies with this. Even uh, GMO foods will deplete you of the magnesium through the gut. Big, big deficiency on blood work. Your RBC levels of magnesium is uh, how you will want to kind of look at that is from a diagnostic view. But symptom-wise, I'll get in that on the next slide. I've been playing a lot more with the magnesium and patients who follow me know I, I'll, at night I'll use an aura ring to measure my sleep. If you are into measuring your sleep cycle and want to play with around a little magnesium, the Biotics Research MGzyme, anywhere one to three at night, you will see an increase in your deep sleep cycle, your heart rate will come down sooner and it will stay lower throughout the night. It's been very cool. I've been feeling a lot more rested. And if you're a hardcore athlete, you will even recover better just with the simple magnesium. A lot of people just sweating out too much magnesium with their workouts. It's amazing how much more rested you will uh, find yourself incorporating that in uh, with the sleep as well. Other symptoms related to the low magnesium, the constipation is pretty common, depression, blood pressure issues, heart arrhythmias, uh, heart attacks, uh, cramping, headaches, dizziness, uh, insomnia um, are pretty common um, with most patients, a lot of patients. My oldest just turned six, my youngest is four. I'm trying to raise them up as some gearheads. We just got a trampoline, so now I'm using a lot more of that outdoor trampoline along with them. It's easy to keep your children and limit them on the screen time if you just play with your kids. Everyone's scared in Michigan right now to 
have car events. I like to you know, bring my kids to little car shows and all that because of the cases going up in the media and the TV scaring people. They keep canceling all these events. So I said, what the heck? I'm going to throw it myself. So I created a cars and coffee thing in South Line that I'm doing throughout the summer on Saturdays. That's where I live, South Line. If you want to come out, I will buy you a coffee and we could hang out and we could chat health and cars at the same time. This was the first one I threw. I had a pretty good turnout. A lot of people were itching to just get out and have some fun and socialize. I've got a new addition to our family coming next week. Little Crimson. It's a mini golden doodle. I'm excited. <laughs> I can't train two kids, but I'm going to try to train a dog, so we'll, this should be fun. Thermoscan. We are going back to our old group that we're using for uh, breast thermography. We're not super excited about the one that we're using in the office. Uh, we have more consistent reading results with um, some of our previous group, so we're going back to recommending them. This product should be within my top 20. We just got this in the office, the Advanced TRS Detox Spray. It's a zeolite, it's a negatively charged mineral that helps pull out toxins, heavy metals that exits through the urine. It should be in my within the top 20. We just got this in the office literally a few days ago. I've had such great results with patients with this that I'm getting Dr. Tent and Dr. Gill on board with this from personal results from my vaccine injured kids, autism, Asperger's, you name it. This could cross the blood brain barrier uh, uh, easier to pull some of these toxins out. My neighbor, who's a real good patient, had a mono issue going on that had severe nausea and vertigo that I was fixed originally, but the second time he had this, he was struggling and we could not get him to turn the corner. I had him on a ton of supplements and he was taking them to a T. I even sent him out to one of my other integrative physicians that run even a more thorough thing of blood work on him and do IV infusions with them as well. He even went to a neurologist, ENT, allergist, GI doctor. Two, three days on this did something that blew me away. And that was when I said, that's it. We're getting this in the office for the patients and we're gonna start using this a lot. I theorize with the mono stuff that I had him on and trying to work with him with, he was taking Claritin for his allergies and something was congesting his liver that the supplements weren't getting to that this somehow pulled out because as soon as I start using this, his nausea and uh, vertigo went away. When they just said all of his other tests were negative and the famous, maybe this is stress, maybe you need to go see a psychiatrist was their final answer for him. Had another patient, and this was just a few weeks ago, her fixed her kid on the side of her Skype appointment. He had a series of vaccines that um, afterwards he had a whole body eczema breakout issue. Two weeks doing this spray, cleared him up. I'm pretty sure it was the hepatitis B vaccine. We've got healthcare workers that are stuck possibly getting this vaccine that they're pushing. This will be at the top of my list to help combat side effects with on top of some other things. So just want you to keep that in mind. Could wearing a face mask trigger lung disease? When bacteria from your mouth enter your lungs, it's linked to advanced stage lung cancer and tumor progression, a finding that raises serious questions about the long-term use of face masks, which could potentially accelerate this process. You are not meant to continually breathe in bacteria into your lungs. This is why you're seeing more people even break out with acne all over their faces. These masks aren't being washed properly. You are not meant to continually breathe bacteria into your lungs like this. 
I'm still trying to find out, wearing two masks in this picture, are you continually pushing fear or are you, are you hiding your identity? At this point in time, I don't know. I'm kind of confused. Just as of yesterday, the CDC released their new mask guidelines. If more people have been vaccinated and it actually works and have also acquired natural immunity, why are we continually wearing masks? Is it because you could asymptomatically carry COVID and give it to someone else? If that's the case, you're going to have to wear a mask forever. This was just posted yesterday too. Fully vaccinated people can go outdoors without a mask. Congratulations. We are almost there. We are almost there. If you're unvaccinated, you can't. Fresh air and sunlight is bad for you if you're unvaccinated. My gosh, this stuff is embarrassing. I'm taking a break this lecture talking about COVID stuff because it's kind of burning everyone out. But I do want to say something, a little bit on this topic. Medical, and this was posted, you know, some lectures back, medical ears are the number three cause of death in the United States. That is behind heart disease number one and cancer number two. Do you think 2020, 2021, that this has decreased or increased? Without a question of a doubt, this has increased. Lack of staffing, lack of people who want to work, people who are scared, more medical errors behind the scenes, nursing homes where you can't visit your relatives because of this pandemic, who knows what's going on. I guarantee you the medical errors have increased. This was just last month, this 14 year old child came into me, anxiety support, anxiety, fearfulness, OCD, lost grandma last year, started counseling, overthinks, all this happened since losing grandma. I'm looking at this kid in this room. I'm looking at the mom. They're both completely distraught. I'd ask, go, ask them, what, ha what happened? What happened with grandma? Grandma apparently had chest pain. Grandma needed to see her doctor. She tried calling her doctor to get in to see her doctor, her primary doctor. Her doctor would not see her until she got a swab to, tech to check for COVID and have a negative COVID test, and then he would see her. In the meantime of trying to get a test to go see her doctor, Grandma fell flat on the floor dead in her living room where this 14-year-old gentleman found Grandma because her doctor and a lot of your doctors are absolute cowards. I have not missed the beat through this whole pandemic of treating any patients. We've been here the entire time. We Skype, we FaceTime, we do phone consults. My little patients know how to get a hold of me on the side. I am always able to be reached. I have even done house calls in the last year. This story disgusts me, and I know there's many more all these types of stories, and not just this. Brands of supplements we carry, carry doctor's research, standard process, um, biotics research. Last Friday, we talked with Dr. Thiel on the phone, um, Dr. Tent, Dr. Gill, and I, just putting our heads together for even future products of, you know, uh, new products that he's got, things that we could do and improve on as well. So we got a lot of cool things coming down the line. So these going into my top 20, I could have done a top 20 of each supplement brand of the between these three. But I'm just diving around doing different ones. Kind of going to keep you guys on your toes through here and start off with Number 20, which is not even a brand of the three that I just mentioned, but this is iodorol. If I'm using a higher iodine-based product, I'm going to use iodorol. But standard process, they do have prolamine iodine. Biotics Research has a liquid iodine, and also they do have a pill form of iodine just like this, which is Iodozyme HP, 
which they created back when the whole Fukushima thing happened because that's when that went on back order and everyone was having a hard time getting iodine. Eye shrink, cyst, tumors, nodules. I go after infections with this stuff. Saturating your body in iodine, the more you're saturated with, the better your health will be. Things like chlorine, bromide, fluoride will all push iodine out of the body. Not much iodine is in the food, soil, and water. Unfortunately, we're being exposed, exposed to more of these halogens that are pushing more of the iodine out of you than anything else. If you woke up this morning and you brushed your teeth with fluoride, you're already behind because of this. There's different testing for iodine that I talked about in my thyroid lecture, um, urinary iodine assessment, your thyroid panel with the TSH, um, optimal forms, potassium iodine, molecular iodine, the food forms that we carry as well, uh, clinical indications of deficiency, goiter, hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, uh, fibrocystic breast disease. If you have uh, your TPO or your thyroid antibodies are elevated, you got to be careful using the iodine and sometimes may not be able to use it um, and may need selenium to even help you utilize it properly as well. Iodine patch test is a simple thing that I'll have patients do once in a while as well. Infectious disease management and control with uh, protodyne iodine. Despite its long history of FSC use, no significant cases of resistance to iodine have emerged. This is thought to be due to the broad antimicrobial activity of the iodine. If you are going into the hospital for anything, the more you're saturated with iodine, the less problems you're going to have as far as infections go and picking up something you don't want picked up at the hospital. This was my case, thyroid case that I talked about at the last lecture. She had four thyroid nodules. I shrunk her nodules doing some simple, simple stuff. Iodine being one of them. I fixed her thyroid, got her off her thyroid medication using this. This will be one of my top 20 I'll talk a little bit later on. Down below, you can't really see it. That's my top one, number one product that I'll be talking about tonight. So I want you to kind of just remember that as we're talking about the nodules with the iodine. And then when we go back to number one, you can circle back to this slide. Rhodial ginseng. I took about eight of these today. I absolutely love the energy I get from this, patients with seasonal affective disorder, um, other depression, adrenal issues, cortisol problems. This is such a great go-to product for me and it helps prevent burnout. 2020 has pressed everyone to the limits and everybody's cooked. The motivation, the drive, Everybody is zapped, and this is one of my go-to things with a lot of these patients because it combats burnout syndrome. In May 2019, the World Health Organization officially included it in its international classification of diseases. Wow, did they know what was going to happen in 2020? This recognition confirmed that burnout was not a figment of the imagination or something suffered only by the weak or unmotivated people. Medical treatments are limited. The Mayo Clinic recommends sleep and relaxation, but now there's hope for 30 to 72 of the working people who suffer from burnout syndrome. This is a great herb. I love it to death. Medi herb is um, of standard process. I use this a lot, especially during the time change and adjusting to the time change in the darker evenings and trying to keep that energy up. It's an adaptogenic herb. It will give you energy and it will keep cortisol down. That's how it works. I talked a lot about the cortisol issue 
in my adrenal lecture, battling adrenal fatigue that you could circle back to as well. This also helps improve learning and memory function. In this journal, they concluded we have provided the first ever comprehensive preclinical systematic review of rhodiola for cognitive behavior in animal studies. And our findings indicate that rhodiola improves learning and memory function in experimental models. Beats living on chemicals. I had a patient who was in today, 25 years old. She was ahead of her generation because she's like, I want to do a hair test. I want to run some labs. I want to get my diet on track. All my friends take Adderall in the morning. They take Xanax in the evening, pop something midday, eat like crap. She's like, they can't function without taking their pills. And this is in their 20s. I was very impressed with her wanting to be proactive with her health today. Organically bound minerals. Now, if you want a food form of iodine, this has kelp in it. Kelp contains uh, iodine, but it also contains potassium. This is a break to the body. My first home run on myself with this, was this supplement in college. I'm laying in bed and my heart was racing. My pulse used to be 95 to about 110 on average until I started taking this supplement. I'm laying in bed, my heart's racing so hard, pounding through my chest, I could count my pulse without feeling a spot on me. And I'm like, is this anxiety driving my heart nuts or is my heart driving my anxiety nuts? I didn't know what the heck was going on. I craved bananas that were more green than yellow because I was starving for potassium. And as soon as I got on six to nine of these a day, it chilled my system out and my pulse came back down to uh, mid to upper 70s. Now, this is a similar product in regards to Mintran. Mintran has calcium, magnesium, potassium, organically bound minerals, a little bit more in the potassium. Both of them work for this whole sympathetic dominant thing, which I'll talk about in a second. But this is a product that is... Um, an extract of water soluble factors from alfalfa and uh, tillandsia root. Water soluble factors that contain predominantly potassium and magnesium. It's better to eat food and green plants are the best source for potassium and magnesium. When we talk about alkalinity, if you get enough of your good minerals and enough of your good greens, you will have your pH balance on that. A lot of people really mess up this whole pH factor and push in this whole, I need to alkalize, 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 drink alkaline water. And unfortunately, I focus on a lot of gut health and continually alkalizing yourself kills your GI tract and you, kills the digestion. Patients who are more sympathetic dominant in nature, go, 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 go. They're stuck in go mode and cannot calm their bodies down will do better with the organically bound minerals and the Mintran because it's the break to the body. People who are more sympathetic, dominant in nature, you will burn your calcium, magnesium, and potassium very quickly. And this is why those supplements chill it out. Now, when you talk about pH and who needs to be more alkaline, people who tend to be more sympathetic, dominant in nature can run a little bit more acidic due to the fact that they're burning those alkaline minerals pretty easily. Let's dive to number 17, ADP. This is an oregano oil pill. I love, love using the supplement on a lot of patients, whether it's SIBO, yeast issues, other funguses, C. diff, waterborne parasites, China virus, mold. My mold patients, if you run the VCS test, I'm suspecting mold. This is definitely one of my go-to things with a lot of patients, even regular mold allergies, but indoor toxic molds. This is a real good uh, go-to one with a lot of patients. This is a patient case I've been working on for a while. She had gallbladder symptoms, which I'm gonna talk about later on with another supplement that's in the top 20. And you can see her bilirubin was elevated. I've treated her for gallbladder symptoms. She still had gas, bloating, and indigestion. 
I want patients with gut issues to learn from this slide who we are treating for gallbladder issues and they're still not responding that well. She had gallbladder issues. I'm treating her for a gallbladder. She's not responding, not responding. I even ran food sensitivities on her. Her food sensitivities aren't that bad. Also treating her thyroid for Hashimoto stuff. So I go, you know what? Something's going on. Your food sensitivities don't look that bad. Your gallbladder, I can see you got still something going on with that with the bilirubin being up, but you're still not responsible with what I'm doing. I think you got SIBO. I ran a breath test on her and she was high on the breath test, which confirms SIBO, which is small intestinal bacterial overgrowth issues. This is an issue in your body where your good bacteria could overgrow on your gut and give you these IBS-like symptoms. And I get patients that ask me a lot, Dr. Jeff, should I take a probiotic all the time? Not all the time. And the patients that do too much of a probiotic, it actually could feed in to a SIBO problem. And that's my main reasoning for a lot of people not to do a daily dose of a probiotic. And it's patients who will do a probiotic and they're still got these gut issues that helps me easily determine, hey, you most likely got a SIBO problem. We could do a breath test, confirm it and whatnot. And some of my stool testing will confirm it too. But these are some of the other symptoms that patients will have if you've got SIBO, nausea, bloating, vomiting, diarrhea, malnutrition, weight loss, joint pains, fatigue, rashes, acne, eczema, uh, asthma, depression, rosacea. Some of my worst, worst, worst acne cases I have cleared up very well with my SIBO protocol. I had these kits. If you're interested in that, they're at the office. $85 Genova kit. I could drop ship them to you um, if you like, if you're out of state. If you're in the office, I got them at the office. Make it as simple as possible. Number 16, the complete care spray, iodine, silver, zinc, vitamin D, boron. This is one of the two things that goes in my children's water bottle every single day for their immune system during the winter time, regardless of its, if it's 20, 20 years before that, years going on. Simple stuff, two sprays of that, and the scoop of the buffer C, which I'm going to talk about next. Iodine, silver, zinc, D. This is phenomenal stuff. More and more people are starting to get used to using more approaches to their health versus antibiotics because we're running into this antibiotic resistant problem that is only getting worse. And these antibiotics are getting stronger and just absolutely destroying people's insides like crazy. Where silver was used, less antibiotics were needed. It's as simple as that. And this is Antibiotics 2020. This is the second thing on top of that complete care spray that goes in. I get a stainless steel water canister, two shots of the complete care spray, a third to a half scoop of this buffered vitamin C powder. Shake that in their water. They drink this every day while they're at school, childcare, whatever. I keeping kids healthy around childcare, school, whatever can be very challenging. I've done tons of different protocols with kids. This is pretty stout protocol between those two things. I love vitamin C. I will do hourly doses of it. You know our fall time, winter time protocol, whether it's flu or whatever flu you want to call it, ACDC. Vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, and more C. Zinc and iodine are great as well. The people losing their taste and smell, that's definitely a zinc component to them. Linus Pauling was pretty much the godfather of the whole vitamin C stuff. His claim that he knew a cure for heart disease, cancer, and infections was uh, greeted with, with ridicule. Uh, his remarkable health claims concerned the substance we know as vitamin C. He talked about doing doses of this in about two to three grams, he was labeled as a quack towards the end, but vitamin C has stood the test of time. Now, that's a buffered vitamin C powder that I was talking about because whole food wise, you cannot get the dose 
that I'm looking for through a food-based one. And straight ascorbic acid, which is acidic, needs to be buffered or you'll have a loose bowel problem with that. So I will balance this off with a food form with my children and other patients I'm doing with this as well because Dr. Royal Lee explains the whole food vitamin C complex and all the other components that goes with it, those little catalyst effects. The whole food vitamin C, cataplex C, you could do hourly doses of it and not have any bowel issues with that as well. AF beta food. Going back to Dr. Royal Lee and standard process, one of the most common things that we treat in the office is gallbladder issues, gas, bloating, indigestion, going in between loose and tight stools, burping, belching, gurgling of the uh, stomach. What they will just call you and say is IBS is a dysfunctional gallbladder, even if your scans don't show up because your gallbladder's got to be 80, 90% disease for it to even show up on their testing. This is gallbladder, and this is a phenomenal product to go after it with because unfortunately, our foods are filled with rancid oils, and it's the rancid oils that stir up the gallbladder, and all the foods that have shelf life because the oils give them shelf life stir up the gallbladder. You go to Europe, eat from a farmer's market, get fresh food, you don't have these issues. The foreigners come over here, eat our food. What's in your food? My stomach hurts all the time. I'm gaining weight. I get acid reflux. It's a ton of the gallbladder. The key component in there is beets. One of the most valuable nutrients present in the beet leaf juice is betaine. Betaine is one of the B complex factors of the methyl donor groups, which plays a valuable role in the intermittent process of the body. Betaine has been widely reported as a lipotropic agent, fat metabolizing factor. And containing betaine in beet leaf may be one of the best reasons why beet leaf juice has been useful in the relief of gallbladder congestion. In simple terms, it thins the bile. It thins the bile, cleanses the gallbladder. If your gallbladder is congested, you may get more constipation, more constipated. If it's shooting out too much bile, you're gonna have more loose bowel movements. This helps regulate all that gallbladder stuff. Dr. Versnall was an absolute genius. This was some of this old contact reflex analysis and you could kind of see some of those points. It was on the upper right side, just under the rib cage, just simple muscle testing to help determine that gallbladder spot. Like I said, the top five things that we treat in the office this is right in that top five. I used to do a pretty cool intro to muscle testing in office seminar. Maybe one day I'll resurrect that, but this is one of the things that I talked pretty heavily about uh, when I did that little mini lecture. And you see right there, <clears throat> the gallbladder reflex from the CRA stuff. We will even poke on that a lot of times and a lot of patients will sh jump right back. If it's bothering you enough, it's gonna shoot all the way back through that shoulder blade on a lot of patients. Number 13, collagen powder. Dairy-free, gluten-free, grain-free. I absolutely love using collagen powder. Skin, hair, nail, bone, joints, cartilage, it supports everything. The benefits, skin, joint health, gut, blood sugar control, brain health, sleep, longevity. Joints, I'm an active person, cycling, trampolining, sports, pickup stuff, golf, whatever. I'm looking for longevity with my joints and this is one of my key things for sure. And I don't want, I can't do whey. I ran my sensitivities and my whey proteins through the absolute roof. I try to limit my dairy because me and dairy don't do good. Growing up is with strep throat and earaches, dairy makes me full of congestion. So dairy is out. If patients who are concerned about weight stuff, dairy's got to be out with them too because so much stuff's full of bovine growth factors, steroids, estrogens, and antibiotics. You will not lose weight doing today's dairy, unfortunately. This collagen powder is type one, type three primarily, but you can see all the different types of collagen where they're found and their sources on this slide. 
I do a more cost conservative shake in the morning. Simple two scoops of collagen, scoop of nitro greens, because the greens taste like crap. I throw a scoop of raw chocolate, release my endorphins. I want my salt and electrolytes up because I drink RO water and I'm not drinking tap water. I do simple, simple stuff. You want to thicken it, taste it up a little bit. Non-sweetened coconut milk is perfectly fine. Intenzyme Forte. This is proteolytic enzymes. This is the strongest supplement we carry that is the closest to a steroid. We go after inflammation issues in the body with this. I've dissolved blood clots out of patients with this. I have done some very, very cool things just with this product alone. This is a patient of mine. He used to play for Ohio State football. You could see his heavily arthritic knees, arthritic neck. His body so full of arthritis, his knees, those are older knees, are bone on bone. His hips are bone on bone. His low back's full of arthritis. His neck is full of arthritis from what you can see here. His shoulders are terrible. He played in the NFL for like two years, but he's late 50s. Raising his arm, he raises both shoulders like this. He needs shoulder surgery, doesn't want to do it. I've got him on these enzymes to help hold him off of surgery. And he says, this is a miracle in a bottle. I can't believe how much more I can move my shoulders. And they're not in as much pain. He's like, there's no way I'm having the surgery now with as good as I feel just from doing these enzymes. One of the key enzymes that's in there is bromelain. If you've been a long-term patient at our office, you know that we use bromelain CLA to go after a lot of artery cleaning stuff, especially if you have one of those genetic heart factors. But it is a pineapple plant-based enzyme. Protein digesting enzyme bromelain demonstrates powerful effects of alleviating pain, swelling, and inflammation. In clinical trials, bromelain-based formulations uh, we're more effective than NSAID use with arthritic pain with people. Supplementing with bromelain-based formulations for uh, after injury or surgery uh, also can speed the healing and uh, reduce the pain. When taken with meals, it's a digestive enzyme. When taken on an empty stomach, it gets in your bloodstream and it digests swelling. There's two ways of using these enzymes. Dosage is everything too. So patients who want to take, you know, some of these top products I'm talking about to get the best results, you got to know the dosage and how to use them properly. That's where the muscle testing comes in too. We could specifically muscle test the dose that's um, specific for you. GTA Forte. This is an awesome, awesome product. Biotics research, it is primarily T4. It is pure thyroid. This is how I get patients off Armour, Synthroid, and all your other thyroid medications because this is pure thyroid. Go on the ingredients, porcine glandular concentrate, 20 MC, uh, MGs. This is pure glandular thyroid, and you could get off your thyroid medication using this product, but you kind of just got to tinker your dose and continue to run those panels and just balance it out. But this is how I get patients off your medications and their doctors will scratch their heads because they've never seen products, nutritional products, regulate a thyroid like this. Trace minerals, PDCM, you've heard us talk over over, over, and over about minerals throughout our lectures all the time. I stole Dr. Gill's slide from his last lecture. 85% of our soil is depleted of the minerals. If the minerals aren't in the soil, it's not in the food, it's not in us. Everyone's deficient because it's just not in our food today. The food is absolutely dead. Watch our athletes. First week of football, all these athletes are, you know, whatever sport, rip, tear, pull, broken this out for the rest of the season because we are completely fragile. I will argue with dietitians, 
meathead guys from the gym that they think they could get all their nutrients from just diet alone. The food's dead. Eat what you want. The food is dead. You better supplement good. We've had cool stories over the years with premature children being under growth at the beginning. Got them on the PDCM, normalize everything out. That's all mineral deficiencies. Cool stuff. If you're, if you're a gardener, incorporate this in your soil mixture. Watch your plants grow during the summer. It's a cool thing that you can incorporate with that as well. Carditol. Not too many patients know about this either. It's not a standard process, biotics product or um, food research. This product works the best for all of my patients with blood pressure issues. Regardless of the cause, this has been the most responsive product I have used for blood pressure to the point that I've got a lot of doctors across Michigan using this product with their patients. I'm not gonna show you the back of this bottle, tell you the dosage, but this has responded great with a lot of my patients. Being a functional medicine practitioner, we wanna know why is your blood pressure up? What's driving your blood pressure up? So you're looking at your preventative factors, your cholesterol components, which will help indicate you know, insulin resistance, but your genetic heart factors, homocysteine, lipoprotein A, fibrogen, C-reactive protein, the A1C should be in this one as well. These are things that need to be looked at. Number eight, dysmuseum granules. Some of these patients looking at that product right there are just going, ugh, because that taste, this is probably the worst tasting supplement we carry at the office, but it works so good I don't care how you gotta get it down, you gotta just get it down. This contains superoxide dismutase. Um, this is an awesome, awesome product. Superoxide dismutase is arguably the body's most uh, crucial antioxidant as it's responsible for disarming the most uh, dangerous free radical of all. The highly reactive superoxide radicals, superoxide radicals, and uh, or ions, negatively uh, charged atoms, are produced when oxygen gains an excess um, electron. When we're treating patients for these hardcore infections, CMV, EBV, other viruses, this better be in the arsenal because it works that good. Nitro greens, daily detoxing, doing simple things daily detox wise. I shouldn't have to put any literature in here about talking about leafy eating leafy greens. This part's common sense, but the food, the water, the air, we're being exposed to things daily, emphasizing your phase one, phase two detox pathways, clearing this stuff and keeping things moving. You can't get around this, we're being exposed to too much exogenous estrogens. You want to metabolize and push as much stuff out of your body as possible. I kicked this thing to the curb five, six years ago. I'm not pushing hot water through plastic every day and getting a daily dose of plastic. I don't care how good you think yours is and storing water in plastic to heat it up and push it through plastic. I'm done with that thing. That thing's kicked to the curb. Dr. Tent, you know, talked about using the Vitanox along with the Nitro Greens or even the Cruciferous Complete pill form of that. Vitanox, that should easily be in the top 20 thing of mine as well. Green tea, rosemary, um, turmeric, grapeseed extract are all, all great components all within that Vitanox just helps assist along with those Nitro Greens emphasizing those detox pathways. The busy, busy, busy brain patients having a hard time calming that brain down. 2020, 2021, mental health 2021, people struggling to stay above. This is a food grade lithium deficiency. It's unbelievable, the number six, 
we use so much of this in our office, slowing down these busy brains, having a hard time falling asleep, waking up in the middle of the night, having a hard time controlling your thoughts, food grade lithium better be up there. Now we talk about the food, the soil, the water, things just being depleted and not being there. Lithium definitely isn't in the soil. On top of that, another big reasoning that a lot of people are depleted on this is adrenal health, high cortisol levels. The cortisol will cook lithium out of the body. This is a recent, these are recent cases I'm talking about. This is in March 9th, um, patient, uh, 38 year old female, here for general health checkup, has a lot of anxiety, worse at night, cannot sleep, medication makes it worse. Uh, mom says she's like this since she was born. You know, you can spot these a mile away. Had her on the food grade lithium, follow up visit. I even ran a cortisol test on her, on her cortisol test. Her first test was normal in the morning, then all elevated all throughout the day. That high elevation of cortisol cooks the lithium on the body. She couldn't believe how well she was sleeping. Her anxiety was doing better. She felt like a million dollars just doing some simple, simple food grade lithium. Sometimes you guys think that it's super complicated with things that we're doing, but I tell you what, some of it's actually pretty basic and simple. Even running a hair test on patients is one of the common ways that we will see a simple lithium deficiency. So many people are just depleted and just running on empty. This could be rage, hostility, anger, schizophrenia, bipolar, scattered thoughts, dyslexia, um, you name it. It is we, the children, trying to get the children to focus at school. A lot of it is a lithium issue. Dr. Thiel and I developed this product together. These infections are getting more and more challenging at getting at. And if you look at the ingredients of this biofilm detox, it is full of enzymes. I took two of the best um, biofilm products on the market, gave them to Dr. Thiel, and I told him I want you to combine those two to make one of your own to go after these biofilm issues um, with patients. And I'm gonna explain this in a second, but I have had great results breaking down these infections with a lot of patients. One thing with enzymes though, if you are prone to ulcers, gastritis, which is inflammation of the stomach lining, gotta be careful with enzymes because it will irritate that stomach lining. That's the only thing that we gotta be careful with, with the hardcore enzyme things with a lot of patients. Also too, if you're on blood thinners, a lot of these enzymes will have a blood thinning component. So we gotta be a little careful with those patients. So what are biofilms? Biofilms are a collective of one or more types of microorganisms that can grow on many different surfaces. Organisms that may contain bacteria, fungi, or protists. And common uh, examples of biofilm are dental plaque. Um, if you're in a pond, stream water, you see the sliminess over rocks, that's a biofilm component. What happens is this: the bacteria and these infections create the slimy bacteria around it called the biofilm that protects it from antibiotics and nutraceuticals from going after these infections. So using enzymes to help break the biofilm apart so the nutraceuticals could go after them more aggressively. It's a little bit of a life cycle of a biofilm. It collects on the surface, the slime starts building up, they collect together, start building on the inside and it disperses and spreads around. Why is it important to go after the biofilm? The National Institutes of Health revealed that among all microbial and chronic infections, 65 to 80% are associated with biofilm formation. 65 to 80% of your infections you're dealing with have some biofilm component to it. And these are devices that uh, may include uh, further down here, breast implants, joint prosthesis, 
uh, mechanical heart valves, uh, shunts, pacemakers, defibrillators, and other implanted devices collect a lot of these biofilm components in the body. Other diseases which have uh, had biofilm uh, with them, atherosclerosis, chronic sinus issues, chronic wounds, cystic fibrosis, endocarditis, inner ear infections, kidney stones, um, osteomyelitis, dental disease, UTIs. UTIs are probably one of the more common ones that I will see, and especially more challenging too if you had been catheterized for any things in the past. Primary sites, secondary sites, mouth contains a ton of I've talked about in the past, your mouth, teeth, and toenails are the two most common hidden areas of infections in the body. These things will travel around, hit different areas of the body, but these biofilm will build up on it and create a lot of issues, and it's a problem. Something I even you know worry about Dr. Tent with his implants of building up biofilm and why it's hard to break down some of these infections that you're trying to push out if you are struggling with infections that we are working with, this is a product you want to think heavily about, including next time you talk with us. If you are full of infection, get rid of the dairy. Milk, ice cream, you got to get rid of it. It just breeds bacteria and makes these infections worse. Does milk really make the body good? No. A 2020 study published in the New England Journal of Medicine um, reviewed over 100 top studies on milk and found that milk consumption is associated with risk of fracture, obesity, cardiovascular disease, allergies, and various cancers. Milk does not do the body good. You'd be surprised, wouldn't be surprised how much people I cut the milk out of their diet altogether, period. Going back to the whole UTI thing, his patients get get these, number four, get these recurrent UTI issues. Digestive and urinary tonic, this is my elemental colloidal silver supplement. You ingest this, I get great, great results with UTI, bladder infections, kidney infections, even food poisoning stuff and some GI stuff with this product um, that our other supplements have not been able to get to. If you are struggling, with that, this is a product that you definitely want to consider. All right, getting to some of the good ones. Number three, berberine. If you're one of my patients, I have a lot of patients on berberine. So many different health benefits of berberine, it's unbelievable. I've had phenomenal results with this with myself. I use it for so many different things. Blood sugar levels, A1C, your cholesterol, triglycerides, LDL. Um, it has some anti-cancer components to it, which I'll talk about. This is awesome, awesome stuff. Berberine and blood sugar. Diabetes is a highly systematic disease, exploring anti-diabetic potential. Uh, studies of berberine have shown that it may improve insulin sensitivity and improve uh, support healthy blood sugar levels. Analysis with the berberine has lowered blood sugar more than a placebo. For example, a study of 116 diabetic patients, their fasting blood sugar decreased by 20% and their hemoglobin A1C decreased by 12%. I am lowering A1Cs even on diabetic patients that I've got their doctors scratching their head about. This has been awesome. This berberine is like natural metformin. Um, and you better consider it. I use this stuff daily, primarily because of the berberine and the cholesterol factor that I have high cholesterol that runs in my family. My previous lectures, I've showed you some of my blood work. I've had cholesterol in my 300s before, my triglycerides in the 700s. This is the supplement that regulates and keeps me where I need to be at. Berberine and parasites. Berberine demonstrates uh, significant antimicrobial activity against a variety of organisms, including bacteria, viruses, uh, fungus, parasites, chlamydia, and other uh, intestinal issues. Currently, the, the predominant clinical use of berberine include bacterial diarrhea, intestinal parasite infections, 
and um, trachoma infections. This is one of the, I don't do as much, I thought this was interesting, as much salad, fruits and vegetables as I eat, I should be doing a lot more of a parasite protocol on a regular basis. And I swear, berberine has kept my gut clean enough to where I don't do as much of the parasite protocol as I should with all the salads that I eat on a regular basis. Berberine and cancer. One review notes that berberine has clear inhibitory effects on colorectal cancer, lung disease, or lung cancer, ovarian cancer, and prostate cancer, liver cancer, and cervical cancer. More research is needed to determine how berberine affects cancer, but you know, sugar feeds cancer. If your blood sugar is running high, I would have to assume it's got to be something with the, the blood sugar component with that. Berberine is also another product that help go after biofilm formations with some of these bacterial issues. And if I have ran any GI analysis on patients in looking at SIBO issues, on the Genova panel, you will always see a lot of times berberine is recommended to go after a lot of the SIBO overgrowth with um, patients on uh, the ends of those charts. So I even use um, this with a lot of my SIBO patients part with our protocol. So I cannot speak highly enough of the berberine. Number two, this is our stem cell cream. This is great, great stuff. If you've watched some of our protocols and Instagram stuff, you may remember Dan. He had a melanoma on his nose. They gouged his nose so bad, they had plans to send him to a plastic surgeon to fix up everything afterwards. He used that stem cell cream, healed up his nose. His doctor could not believe what he saw right in front of his face. It was very, very cool. We had a gymnast. This is pre and post using cream on her hand and how fast she healed it up. We've had some pretty cool cases. An alopecia case, and alopecia is very, very challenging. And I've had some other cases I try to duplicate it. It doesn't always happen, but this was a pretty cool case that we had using a stem cell cream on that patch, help grow that back. Collagen supplement improves skin hydration, elasticity, roughness, and density. Dermatology measurements, base measurements have proven that oral collagen peptides together with other um, nutrients significantly improves skin hydration, elasticity, roughness, and density after three months of intake. I love collagen and I got a pretty cool skin protocol for people who are looking to tighten up their skin and keep wrinkles out that include using collagen powder, collagen and vitamin C, tighten up the skin, <clears throat> your essential fatty acids that are balanced that have the 369 feed the skin and using the stem cell cream on those areas of wrinkles help out. That is an anti-aging protocol for those patients looking to use some products to tighten up the skin. My number one product, my number one product, Glyco Plus. What is Glyco Plus? GCMAF. Glyco Plus contains GCMAF. We'll explain this. This patient was just in yesterday. I told her the timing of her coming in and me having her in a lecture was just perfect. She was diagnosed with colon cancer. She did, was recommended to do three weeks of um, chemotherapy after two weeks of doing it. Uh, actually, she stopped after doing uh, the meds one week. She felt so bad doing chemotherapy after a week. She's like, I'm done. I'm not doing it. I can't, can't do this. She's like, I want nutritional help, treat me for nutritional stuff. I can't say I treat, we, I treat the body. We don't treat cancer at the office. I had her on a phase one diet. I had her on this GCMF cream. 
she had family she had family that lives in Texas so she on her follow-up here she was feeling great everything's good but she's like I got this cancer on me I'm gonna go down to the MD Anderson Cancer Clinic and uh, you know just have them watch and monitor things but she's like I don't really have any plans to you know further pursue any radiation or chemotherapy with what I got going on the MD Anderson Cancer Clinic went to go evaluate things with her two months later they couldn't find any cancer in her period I treated her for her immune system I didn't treat cancer or cancer whoosh, they didn't find anything 85 years old and she cleared this up it's always cool when you kind of see a face to who you're working with but she was just in yesterday she's doing great it was just puts a smile on my face every time I see her in the office what does GCMAF do it lowers an enzyme in the body called nagalase well, what is nagalase? Nagalase is a protein made by all cancer cells and viruses. You got cancer cells, you got viruses. It, the nagalase goes up, the GCMF goes down. If you could increase the GCMF, nagalase goes down. Nagalase blocks the production of GCMF, thus preventing the immune system from doing its job. Without the active immune system, cancer and viral infections can grow unchecked. As an extremely sensitive marker for all cancers, nagalase provides a powerful system for early detection. Serial nagalase testing provides a reliable, accurate method for tracking the results of any therapeutic regimen for cancer, AIDS, or other chronic viral infections. We had a lab on the East Coast that we were using to check nagalase levels. The kits were pretty tedious. You had to keep everything frozen to get it out there and everything. We were doing that initially. We kind of skipped over that and we just start, we go right to putting people on GCMF. Dr. Bradstreet is getting great results with children who had autism with GCMF. He had a very questionable death to the point some years back, a few years back, that other holistic practitioners seemed to be disappearing and they questioned. Was it because of this whole GCMF? I don't know. For you guys who are visual, viruses, cancer, make naglase. It blocks the GCMF. You want to spin it the other way. Raise the GCMF, decrease the naglase. Immune system kicks in, things get taken care of. Look at this. I got another number one product. Pectisol, modified citrus pectin. I tried to find the chart of my patient I wanted to tell the story about. I couldn't find it. I told the story probably four or five years ago, but I never included the product of what I did with him. This was it, modified citrus pectin. A gentleman in his late 60s was in Ohio, confirmed by two different doctors clinics that he had prostate cancer. PSA was in the teens. He had a biopsy. The Gleason score was elevated. And on the Gleason score, if it's really elevated, there's a good probability that the cancer is outside of the prostate and throughout the body. He decided to have the robotic procedure done to remove his prostate. The guy who did it in Michigan Actually, the, I wish I would have found out what doctor it was, but was on this same product as well, and it was very familiar with modified citrus pectin. When they removed his prostate, they brought it to the pathology lab. They didn't find any cancer. I'm not treating cancer. I'm treating his immune system because he's have immune modulating things to it, but his cancer was... Whew, not there when it was confirmed. Two different biopsies, two different clinics, and a Gleason score on top of that. That was a very cool case. Hop on PubMed and you look, look up the literature 
on modified citrus pectin and the anti-cancer components to it, you'll understand if why I will recommend this for patients if they're deciding to go in the direction of a biopsy or something um, on that realm. If I'm traveling around the world and I'm told I can only take one supplement with me to go around the world, grape, fruit, seed extract in pill form and in liquid form is what I'm traveling with. What I have done with these two things has been amazing. But if I could only take one thing and I'm tra traveling around the world, this is going to be one of them. This is an old book that Dr. Tent used to quote with this, the Grape Seed Extract book uh, from uh, Dr. Alan Sachs. It's a 1998 book full of the literature from 1998. There's a ton more newer stuff I just didn't feel like adding, but this is a lot of what we used to quote uh, on this product. We have so many different forms of grapefruit seed extract. That's pill, liquid form, eardrops, nasal spray, toothpaste, uh, hand cream, you name it. We use a lot of it. So where do we start? Get a good quality daily supplement protocol of supplements going with you. Hair test analysis for heavy metals and mineral absorption, which I will be talking a bit heavier on on my next lecture with the dementia stuff. Do some expanded blood work. Come in the office, get muscle tested, because if you want optimal results with the products that, I, that I'm talking about, you want to find the right dose for you uh, with what we're treating with you with. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. The troubles of this world are all temporary. Just a little reminder. Follow us on Facebook, YouTube. Follow our protocols. If things get taken down, we're going to have them on other platforms. If you follow us in the blog and the newsletter, you will be informed. The supplement companies that we use, website, previous lectures, And thank you for tuning in tonight. Thank you.